Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel, Space Chase. In this video today, we take you through NASA's insane nuclear rocket that will be used to take humanity to Mars. But before we do, make sure to stay until the end of the video. This is going to be very exciting. After a 300 million mile voyage and a nerve wracking plunge to the Martian surface, the hulking, multi billion dollar NASA rover Perseverance arrived safely on the Red Planet just before 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Touchdown has been verified. Perseverance is safe and sound on Mars' surface, according to Swati Mohan, a Perseverance team engineer. The one-ton nuclear-powered Perseverance performed a fast acrobatic fall through the thin Martian atmosphere, which was recorded on camera for the first time if everything went properly. The rover timed its movements to land within a four-mile-wide landing ellipse in Mars' Jezero crater, which previously has a deep and potentially long-lived lake. Perseverance then beamed its first images from its position on the surface, triggering socially distant celebration at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California and verified its safe arrival with a signal sent to Earth by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Matching face masks muffled shouts of delight at JPL's mission control, but the team's relief and jubilation were still apparent. These missions are difficult. A lot of things have to go right. Jennifer Trosper of JPL, Perseverance's deputy project manager, adds, No promises can be made. That's what keeps things interesting. The rover's aim is ambitious. It'll look for clues of ancient life on Mars. It'll be the first of NASA's first rovers to search for traces of long-dead Martians, inhabitants of a world that was warmer and wetter than the dry planet we see now for the first billion years or so. Perseverance will pack its pockets with rock samples that will ultimately be brought to Earth for further examination to aid scientists in their hunt for evidence that Mars was once a live planet. Those intergalactic artifacts may hold the key to determining if life ever existed on Mars. If scientists are lucky, the rover's set of equipment will point to Jotaro's once wet landscape and the rover will uncover answers. During a conference call with reporters earlier this week, NASA Associate Administrator Thomas Zerbuchen stated, quote, our path has been from tracking the water to seeing if this planet was livable and discovering complicated chemicals. And now we're entering a completely new period. The initial phases of surface operations have begun now that the rover has arrived safely on Mars. 300 million miles to another world. On July 30th, 2020, Perseverance set sail from Mars. It traveled through space for seven months, tucked away inside its ship like a beetle inside its protective shell. The rover's six wheels were pushed inward, the mast and robotic arm were folded, and a miniature helicopter named Ingenuity was tucked beneath its belly. During the trip, JPL teams occasionally awoke the rover to test its internal systems and record a small audio clip using its onboard microphones. When we switched on the microphone during the trip, I believe I was the first person to receive the audio files, explains JPL's Adam Nielsen. And hearing a mechanical whirring sound, experiencing spaceflight in that other sense, is incredibly visceral and thrilling. However, on February 18th, the most critical part of the rover's journey began, the Entry, Descent and Landing, or EDL, sequence of events. In EDL, there is no half-credit, adds Gregory Villar, a team member. There are thousands of little things and large things that can go wrong. Perseverance was speeding toward Mars at a blistering 12,100 miles per hour near the end of its cruise phase, much too fast to land safely. The drag on the spacecraft slowed its descent to less than 1,000 miles per hour after it struck the Martian atmosphere, and then a parachute reduced it to roughly 200 miles per hour. However, the air on that planet is too thin for a parachute to properly deposit such a large machine, so it began a series of precisely choreographed movements to slow its descent even further. Perseverance completed a final leg with the aid of a slightly improbable sounding device called the Sky Crane after deploying its chute ditching its heat shield and locating a safe landing location. A sky crane, which is essentially a rocket-powered jetpack that lowers the rover on tethers, was previously used to securely set the Curiosity rover in Gale Crater on Mars in 2012. Parachutes and onboard retro rockets, or a cocoon of 24 airbags, have been used in previous landings. However, with a robot as large as Perseverance, those strategies would be useless. Doesn't it seem like some of the best ideas start off as crazy? According to Nelson, people think it's crazy when you do something out of the ordinary, but you have to do it to go to the next level. The Sky Crane's retro rockets slowed the rover's descent to about 17 miles per hour after it separated from the parachute. It then used three nylon lines to gently lure Perseverance to the ground from a height of around 70 feet above the Earth. 
The Sky Crane took flight and face planted far enough away from the rover's surface activities after the tethers were cut. Only NASA animations could demonstrate how Curiosity's mission progressed. This time, though, the space agency set out to film the action. Six cameras, three looking at the unfurling parachute, and the others observing the rover and the Sky Crane should have captured the intricate EDL acrobatics if all went according to plan. Engineers also installed a microphone on the rover, and NASA will share the sights and sounds of a rover plunging to an alien surface in the coming weeks as the data is downloaded and analyzed. I can't express how wonderful I believe having the video and sound will be to feel like you're there riding along," adds Nelson, who is part of the JPL team in charge of the footage. Getting the rover's bearings The rover's mission to Jezero Crater begins in earnest now. Perseverance's primary purpose will be to read the geologic history of Jezero and seek for any evidence of previous extraterrestrial life. It will also select and stockpile rock samples for retrieval and return to Earth by a future rover sometime during the next decade. Scientists chose Jezero from four final finalists after an extensive battle, based on compelling evidence that it was originally filled with water in a vast river delta near the western crater rim that's rich in sediments that might retain biological material. With its rocks, cliff edges, and possibly dangerous sand traps, Jezero wasn't the safest site to send a rover, and Perseverance wouldn't have made it there without certain advancements to prior landing technology. Basically, we told the scientists that they could travel to any place they wanted, Villar explains, and in the past, that was never really a thing. During its descent, for example, autonomous algorithms assisted the rover in guiding itself to a hazard-free landing zone. Even with that greater accuracy, the crew had no idea where Perseverance would step foot in Mars for the first time. Scientists will establish the rover's exact landing site and orientation during the next day or so, using data from spacecraft in Mars orbit and from the rover itself, which is critical for planning its initial surface travels and communication with Earth. Throughout the history of Mars exploration, scientists have made compromises on where they want to land and the questions they can answer given on the landing equipment we have, says Robin Ferguson of USGS, whose team assisted Perseverance in reaching Jezero. We may have significantly more risks in our landing ellipse than we've ever had before for the first time. We can visit significantly more scientifically fascinating and entertaining places. Stretching its wheels Teams will focus on checking out the onboard systems and making sure everything is operating properly during the rover's early days in Jezero. We don't do much the first day because we arrive in the afternoon and Earth has already set, Trosper explains, referring to the fact that from the rover's perspective, our home planet will have gone beyond the Martian horizon. As a result, any connection with the rover will be reliant on orbiting spacecraft passing overhead every few hours or so. The rover's onboard software will begin to convert to service operations mode, and the crew will unlock several of the rover's appendages that were stowed throughout the flight and descent. From its position on the surface, Perseverance will take some pictures which will be communicated to Earth through one of the orbiters. The rover will then go to sleep to recharge its batteries, only waking up if an orbiter approaches. Perseverance will use its high-gain antenna to trade to locate Earth during the next several Martian days, as long as it can keep its batteries charged and onboard equipment warm. The crew will deploy its remote sensing mast, which houses many cameras, and shoot a series of 360-degree panoramas after the rover is convinced that it's on firm ground. The rover will continue to convert from its landing software to surface software over the next week, according to Trosper. It's a dance with a lot of steps, and it's on Mars, so if something goes wrong, it's difficult, Trosper explains. This is my fifth rover, and I've been part of every rover anomaly we've ever had, and you simply don't want to end up in these circumstances, she says. After the software tests are completed, the rover will move its robotic arm and take a brief spin approximately a week or two into the mission. The Ingenuity helicopter will continue to test onboard instrumentation, and it'll most likely attempt powered flight in another planet in a few months. The expedition will next begin in earnest, with a six-wheeled rover attempting to answer one of humanity's most important questions, are we alone? For more than a century, we believe that the solution may be found in Mars, a planet that has enticed us with varied promises of intelligent or single called life. Although the arid landscapes we observe now are most likely uninhabited, water collected and flowed across the Martian surface billions of years ago, life had a potential to thrive if it could take hold. Finally, after fantasizing about discovering life among the stars and picturing what it may be like on Mars, we may be able to learn if we can call the red planet our next home. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel Space Jays for more such amazing content and updates. Also, if you have any thoughts about this, let us know in the comments below. See you in the next one.